In this lesson, we'll be looking at the law of cosines to follow up on the law of sines. And we're going to use the law of cosines in the place of the Pythagorean theorem, but for oblique triangles. So the Pythagorean theorem only works whenever we have a right triangle. Uh, so the law of cosines is something that we can use even if we don't have a right triangle. In fact, if we look at uh, that first equation for the law of cosines, just focus on the first three terms, we actually have exactly the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now the rest of that, that minus 2AB times cosine of C, if angle C is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees, we know that the cosine of 90 is zero, meaning that in that particular case, that whole other term would go away, leaving us with just uh, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Again, coming back to that Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so that extra term that's added on, that 2AB cosine C, uh, that is the part that's going to make this the law of cosines and sort of adjust the Pythagorean theorem so that it can work on oblique triangles as well as right triangles. Uh, so there's three different forms of the law of cosines written out, uh, but they're all just a rewrite of the first generic law of cosines term. Uh, each one's just solved out so that we could have a different uh, letter in for whatever angle we're using. Uh, so one for angle C, one for angle B, and one for angle A. And notice that in each of those cases, whichever angle I'm plugging into the lone trig function is also the side that hangs out by itself over on the other side of the equal sign. Uh, and each of the other letters that are interchangeable are just whichever letter is not being plugged into the cosine function. So fun handy bit there. Uh, there's also a new formula for area that we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but for starters, let's just take a look at problem one. So using the law of cosines uh, to solve for the triangle, given that angle A is 108 degrees, B is 10 feet, and C is six and a half feet. Uh, so since I'm given angle A and the two sides next to it, I've got a side angle side triangle. So we'll use the law of cosines here uh, because I don't actually have any ratio of the law of sines that will work because I don't have all the information about a single letter, so I must be using the law of cosines. And uh, I'll use the third iteration of that, of that law of cosines. But again, they're all just the same thing, but rewritten. So I've got that A squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a, which in this case is 108 degrees. So solving that for A, I'll just want to take the square root of both sides. And plugging all that into a calculator, I get 13.51 as the first piece that we'll solve for. And since everything else is given in feet, or both B and C are given in feet, then this should also be in feet. Uh, then we'll go about solving for the other missing sides or the other missing pieces. Uh, since we already know all the sides at this point, we're going to actually be looking for angles. Uh, so next, I'm going to solve for angle C. 
And I'm going to go back to the law of sines now to get that, because the law of sines, I think, is a little easier to use than the law of cosines. So I'll just use the law of cosines that one time, and then go solve uh, using the law of sines. So I can say that the sine of angle C divided by 6.5 is equal to the sine of 108 degrees divided by 13.5. Or 13.51, because we'll round to an extra decimal place for the rest of our calculations, since we're trying not to round in the process. Uh, so that means that C is equal to the inverse sine of 6.5 divided by 13.51 times the sine of 108 degrees. All of that goes on the inside of that inverse sine problem, or that inverse sine function. Plugging that into a calculator, I got 27.2 degrees. And now that I have two of my angles, I can just use the fact that all triangles, all angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees to solve for the missing one. So the angle that we're missing is angle B. It must be equal to 180 minus 108 minus 27.2. Plugging that into a calculator, I got 44.8 degrees. Now for part two, we wanted to get the area of this triangle. And we could use the new formula that we're given for area in this law of cosines unit, but we also have all of the formulas for area that we learned back in the law of sines unit. And one of those formulas from the law of sines unit went something like this. Area is equal to one half of B C sine A. Or there's also A B sine C or C A sine B. But in this case, I picked out B C sine A because that is exactly what our given information is. We have sides B and C and angle A. In fact, anytime we have a side angle side triangle like this one, uh, we can use that given information uh, to get the area right away. So this is equal to one half of 10 times 6.5 times the sine of 108 degrees. Uh, plug all that into a calculator, and I got 30.91. Uh, and this should be in square feet, since all of our lengths were measured in feet. Now in part B of this problem, uh, we're given all three sides of our triangle. So a side, side, side triangle. In this case, we're gonna have to use the law of cosines in order to find our first angle. Uh, but we're gonna have to solve that law of cosines for what's inside of cosine, meaning we're gonna need to take the inverse cosine of some, some number here. So, in this case, 
where I have the option of solving for any of my three angles first, I will always solve for my largest angle first. Because if there is going to be an obtuse angle, that being an angle that's greater than 180 degrees, only an arc cosine function is going to pick that up uh, because an inverse sine function is restricted only to the first quadrant, so between zero and 90 degrees, uh, meaning I could end up getting a false answer if I try to use a law of sines in order to find my biggest angle. So if I try to use inverse sine to find the biggest angle, there's a chance that I could end up screwing that up. So instead, if given the choice of solving for any angle I like first, always solve for the biggest one first. Meaning we're gonna look for angle C first. So that law of cosines says 10 squared is equal to five squared plus eight squared minus two times five times eight times the cosine, my angle C. Uh, so I'm gonna start by just trying to isolate cosine C. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move that term over to the left side. So two times five times eight times the cosine of C is equal to five squared plus eight squared minus 100 squared. Because I'll also be moving that 10 squared over to the other side. Don't know why I decided to only square out 10, but nothing else. So let's just change that back to 10 squared. Uh, next, I'll get cosine C by itself, which means dividing to five, eight over to the other side. <laughs> giving us this. And if I just take the inverse cosine of each side, I should get an answer for C. And when I did that, I got 97.9 degrees. So it's a good thing we solved for angle C first, since that law of cosines gave us uh, an angle that was in the second quadrant because C should have been uh, C should have been an obtuse angle, which means when I then go to use the law of sines, I know that I'm never going to have that worry of accidentally getting an angle that's in the first quadrant when I should have got one in the second quadrant, because both of my other two angles must be acute. Uh, so we'll use our given information uh, to solve for the other missing sides. Might as well go in reverse alphabetical order. So I'll start with sine of B divided by the length of B, which is eight, and set that equal to the sine of 97.9 divided by the length of C, which is 10, meaning that B is equal to the inverse sine of eight over 10 times the sine of 97.9. And plugging all of that into a calculator, I got 52.4 degrees. And now there's only one angle left to solve for, angle A. And it should be 180 minus the other two. So minus 97.9 degrees 
and also minus 52.4 degrees. Uh, and when I did that, I got 29.7 degrees. Now I've solved for all three missing pieces. So I've got my triangle. So now to get the area for this triangle. Uh, and let's recall what our new area function was equal to. It's the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c where s is the semi-perimeter, uh, meaning it's just the sum of a, b, and c over two. So in our case, s should be that sum, five plus eight plus 10 over two, that works out to 11.5. Meaning that the area that we want should be the square root of 11.5 multiplied by three other numbers. Oh, where each of those other three numbers, I can edit, where each of those other three numbers should be the difference between 11.5 and our three sides. So that comes out to 6.5 in the case of A, 3.5 in the case of B, and 1.5 in the case of C. Plugging all that into a calculator, and we should get 19.81. I believe this is square centimeters. Yep, since each of our side lengths measured in centimeters, our area should be in square centimeters.